Hi there, welcome to another King's Daily. I'm Marcus, one of the leaders here at King's Church Norwich, where each day we are encouraging ourselves from God's Word. Recently, we've been working our way through the book of Acts, and today we come to Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 24, which continue to follow Paul and Silas as they tell people about Jesus. So let's have a read. Uh, Acts chapter 16, verses 16 24. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them. And the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So far, Paul and uh, the Christians, and uh, as they've shared the gospel, they have mainly... Uh, encountered hostility and persecution from their fellow Jews or at least influential Jews who had an outward form of religion but no inward living relationship with God but now persecution comes from a pagan culture from those who know nothing of the one true God and instead are centering their lives around all sorts of other things. Now in thinking about this account my Attention was initially focused on the slave girl and the evil spirit, but then something else popped out from this passage, as it so often does when you read the Bible. You're reading it and something the spirit highlights something to you. I'd missed the significance of it at first, um, I think, um, just I guess because the 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 story of the slave girl and the evil spirit kind of raises all kinds of questions and it kind of draws draws our attention, but. I think there's something even more important um, for us to be aware of. There's an even greater and powerful dynamic at work that it is a, there's a helpful reminder in this in this passage of, of that. And I'm, I'll talk about that in just a moment. But maybe first first things first, the, the slave girl and the and the evil spirit that has in some in some ways attached itself to her and was enabling her to function, it seems, as a sort of fortune teller. So through her, it was probably telling people details about their life, um, past, present and future, and probably speaking into their life in some way. Its um, knowledge about the future would, of course, be fallible, but it seems plausible and correct enough to persuade people that some kind of supernatural revelation was taking place, which it was. But here's the thing. Her owners had made much gain from her abilities. People are paying a lot of money for these revelations and uh, so-called insights. Why was that? Well, that's obvious in some ways. It's because people want inside information about their lives. At, at one level, um, we want to know what's going to happen in the future, or perhaps they wanted to, to connect and, and find out or or to just uh, to connect with dead relatives in in some way to to put it bluntly or friends that had passed away they they missed them and they they were looking for ways to reach out to them and uh, and and connect but at a deeper level maybe more broadly we want someone to tell us the story of our lives to speak into our life and make sense of it all to place our lives in a larger context or a framework to tell us who we are and what we're doing, what does this all mean? 
These are understandable desires, and many people have them. They're powerful desires. And that's, in fact, why this girl was making so much money for her owners, and why this sort of thing is big business even today. But the slave girl's pronouncements and all similar practices today are actually a counterfeit of the real thing. The thing we are reaching out for, the, the thing we long for, the thing we need to hear most of all is God's voice, not the half-truths and speculations and misdirections of, of a demon, but the words of our Heavenly Father speaking to us. His words are the ones that can bring true strength, encouragement and comfort to us. Occult practices, they prey on a, a deep and in, in a sense, genuine need in us, but they ultimately lead us away from the truth and away from the light and away from life. By contrast, God's voice to us as he speaks to us and speaks into our lives and speaks about us. His voice turns the lights on. His voice reveals the truth to us and, and his voice imparts life to us, everlasting life. And maybe you're seeking answers to some key questions about about your life. Well, in truth, we may not get all the answers just yet, but we do have many of the big pieces of the puzzle before us, particularly well, and especially and, and really only in, in what God's word says to us. This is God's word to us through his word. He speaks to us and he says, I formed you for a purpose to reveal in your character and your words and your actions and your relationships, something about what, what I'm like, what God is like. This is what we're, we're formed for. This is what we're created for. This is what we exist for. This is what God's word revealed to us. But more than that, God made us. He made you in order that we might reach out to him and come to know him and enter into an eternal loving relationship with him, knowing his love for us and expressing his love to those around us. This is wonderful news. This, this may, begins to make sense of our life, or at least puts our life in a, in a greater and true framework and context. But here's what we don't often want to hear. So you and me, all of us, have turned away from God and run after false gods and oriented our lives around th things that aren't God at all, that didn't create us and that don't love us and... Um, didn't certainly didn't bring us into being and certainly can't define the meaning uh, of our lives and we've thought and done things and said things that are that are evil that are wrong that are not in line with who God is and what our true purpose is and these things they put a barrier between us and God the Bible calls it sin it separates us from God it separates us from our true purpose for the true meaning of our lives but here is the wonderful truth that God speaks to us through the gospel, which Paul and Silas and others were, 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 were telling people. They were, they were sharing with people the true way of salvation, the way to come to know God. This is the truth that God so loved us, so loved you, that in the person of his son Jesus, he died for you. And on the cross took all our sin and our wrongdoing and was punished in our place for us opening the way back to God, not through us being good enough or working hard enough or improving ourselves in some way, but through faith in Jesus, through trusting in what he has done for us, his life and death counting for us. And through faith in Jesus, we're not only forgiven and cleansed, but adopted as sons and daughters, and brought close into God's family. And now God speaks to us as a father speaks to his children full of love, imparting truth and wisdom and purpose and meaning and security, all these things. And he does this not only through his word in the Bible, but through one another, as his spirit enables uh, each one of us to encourage another, uh, albeit imperfectly, we do it imperfectly, of course, but nevertheless, God's spirit in us gives us words of encouragement, God's words to speak and encourage those around us. And this, this, prophetic gift is a wonderful one and Paul says we're to, to especially desire it 
um, among us um, more than all all prophetic or all all spiritual gifts this is particularly one the voice of God amongst us bringing strengthening encouraging and comfort is to be prized so much so let's let's be open to God speaking to one another through through us as we gather albeit on zoom often these days let's earnestly seek this gift and ask God to speak encouragements to us that we can share with others we can share the truth we can share God's love and we can share God's plans with one another there's lots more we, we could say but um, just to keep this reasonably short I want to mention the other thing that popped out at me um, you see my focus was on the slave girl and the evil spirit and all that that was happening through her but the spirit actually here is, is uh, of the slave girl is rather weak I don't know if you spotted how easily Paul just swatted it away in the name of Jesus there is such power to to see people set free from all kinds of spiritual bondage such as this and in the name of Jesus it was gone but there's a more deeply rooted spiritual force at work in this passage one that is more prevalent and more powerful and I wondered if you spotted it it's the love of money once the slave owner's means of making money was threatened all hell breaks loose these these guys lie and manipulate the, the judicial system and they stir up the crowds in order to protect their interests. So Jesus says that love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. He says it can act like a God in our lives. You can choose God or you can choose money. Money calls out to us. And Paul and Silas quickly dispatch this python spirit. Um, but it's part of a larger spiritual hierarchy. And here we see the very real consequences for them that come in uh, beginning to confront uh, these powers and now uh, as we read on though um, spoiler alert uh, God does release them from prison and is seen to be more powerful than any of these these things but here we see the love of money in all its true anti-God anti-gospel colors there are evil spirits that are at work through the occult practices and we need to be aware of these things but let us also be aware of the huge power of money in our culture and the love of money that can draw people like a, a riptide away from Jesus, away from, from the gospel. You see, money does talk. It speaks to us through the media, prophesying a false identity and a false future and a false gospel to us. It says we're defined by our bank balance. It says life is about acquiring as much money as possible. It says that happiness is found in the abundance of possessions. It tells us that our security is bound up in our savings and to protect our income at all costs. And so with such a loud voice speaking to us, how much more do we need to hear and listen to God's voice to us, revealing and reminding us that life is about knowing him? and receiving and sharing his love and this we do through faith in Jesus knowing God as our heavenly father who provides for our needs and whose good plans for us give our lives true meaning and purpose so may God bless you today as you live out of these wonderful truths God bless you